Some jobs are really nice to do and others can be a little bit of a nightmare as uh, hopefully you're seeing from this uh, from this video. Um, just for all the people that ask how I fix ladders over the stairs, you see I've locked those in there, You've got the major ladder locking into the riser and then the second ladder locking into the first ladder so it can't go anywhere, I like slip off that step you go a tumbling. Now you can put a, a scaffold board from one ladder across to the other, but you'll find it's very restrictive when you wanna go down the actual big wall when it comes to plastering one of the big walls either side of this. You can see uh, from here what my reach is from the top of this ladder, from the ceiling and the walls, and also back down and back up again. These are good exercise, these jobs, but uh, man, they're a pain. Okay, and up from this side, what my stretch is across, again on the ceiling and the walls. Now previously, uh, the quote for this job was just to do the walls. Um, and then the client decided they'd like the ceiling done, which was fine. So I did to the quote for that. And then when the electrician came to put their um, new lights in the sloping uh, stair ceiling, um, they realized that they had that void uh, above there. When they told me there was a void above and they were hoping to take the old ceiling out, I had a pretty good idea what was underneath it. and. Uh, I wasn't disappointed, or was I? <laughs> anyway, this video is just to show how, the, um, how I lock my ladders in on this particular kind of a stairwell and how I get my, uh, my coats of skim up onto what is a very high ceiling over and above these stairs. You can see the uh, plaster on that side isn't too bad. The main wall going down the right hand side, absolute mess, an awful lot of the finish uh, came off uh, when the clients were um, stripping the wallpaper on that side and after taking off the, um, the full ceiling uh, that just obviously added to the size and height of the wall um, on both sides. I think I'm trying to recall whether or not this is only one bag I mixed up here and the um, I don't think I put any kind of retarder in this at all I might have put a little bit of, um, um, of extra time in but I don't think I don't think I did because it was just the one bag and initially I was just gonna hit the ceiling 
with that bag. Um, but it turned out that one bag was enough to hit that ceiling because of course it's, it's high and it's awkward. But at the end of the day, it's not huge. It's just the fact you've got to get up and down um, ladders, which a lot of you guys would have uh, done already at some point in your uh, in your plastering career. Um, if you're newbies, uh, then welcome <laughs> to uh, <laughs> how to plaster a really awkward ceiling. Um, these things are doable, but uh, in my opinion, they're not fun. And uh, for the years I've been doing it, um, I don't <laughs> enjoy the challenge immensely <laughs> uh, anymore. <laughs> but, uh, but I knew it could be done. This is more or less as far as I can reach uh, from this side. Oh, and as I was saying, the, uh, the gear that I had left over after I managed to get this ceiling on uh, did also the wall that directly that the other ladder is now leaning on. And what I do when I, I coat that wall up and where the ladder's leaning on it, I will push it off with my back, trowel some plaster on there, and I will rest the ladder back onto the plaster, onto the wet plaster. And although that obviously marks the plaster, at stages as it's drying and I'm troweling up, I will pull the ladders back and I will fill over the holes um, with the plaster from on my second coat and uh, with my fat when I'm troweling up. So although there's a ladder there, basically gets the job done. And if there's any discrepancy at all at the end of that, I will um, I will go over it with a bit of fat from my next uh, my next set just to fill in any any very minor things. Um, that sorts that out and around the corner as well the small wall um, above the door to the far left there I also get a coat of this set onto that and manage to trail the whole thing up so here I am now on the opposite side luckily I can reach <laughs> just to marry the two together from the other ladder and from this one. Oh, the joys of being a plasterer. Also, because the um, the house isn't particularly large when it comes to space, uh, I had to store a lot of my tools either in the bathroom that's just at the top of the stairwell or in the uh, kitchen diner at the bottom of the uh, hallway um, because you, there's just not enough room to have your, all your tools uh, in, the, in the space where you work on because they would just be completely in your way. And obviously at the top of the stairs here you do need uh, your mixing bucket at the top. You don't want to be running up and down those stairs and then up ladders uh, with your gear at the bottom. Nearly done with laying on this first uh, this first coat. <sighs> Not easy, but it keeps you fit. I think in total this job. Uh, eventually took three days um, to finish which pleased the client because they were going away and ideally they wanted me to be done uh, before they went I'd allowed longer for that as I normally do um, which is then handy for me because it gives me time to make this video <laughs> okay here we are this is my 1200mm speed skim plastic blade Obviously guys, when you're doing this kind of work, you do need to watch your step. Um, you don't want to be slipping off a ladder. Uh, and they're setting this configuration up a, up a stairwell. Um, if you did fall and you caught your foot in it, you'd probably um, bust your ankle, uh, if you're lucky. OK, 
Okay, then there's the, the awkward bits, which again, people ask me if I'll do a video uh, for the awkward bits, but a lot of guys seem to not bother <laughs> uh, putting in. So for your watching pleasure and learning pleasure, this is me using my slightly too big a trowel to put this particular part on. I've got a miniature um, Marshall town, which I decide to uh, pick up in a minute when I realize this one is a little bit too big. Uh, for what I'm trying to do. Have I done that yet? Nope, not yet. I'm still on the big trail. Let me get that section in. You can see as ever I've put my uh, uh, fiberglass tape on any cracks uh, that are around, around the ceiling or on the ceiling. And especially around this doorway. Because obviously when going up and down there people will be putting pressure uh, on the edge of the frame when they go up into the loft. Aha, the uh, miniature Marshall Town. There she is. Aha, that's better. Let me try that across. It doesn't fit on that side, but fortunately, on the opposite narrow, narrow side, it does actually fit. So, after getting this bit of the first coat as flat as I can get that, I'll be able to move across onto the yeah, right hand side. Yeah, the yeah. area of all you're looking at. Uh, directly in front of me and to the right. I put those on as well, which you will see uh, in a minute. I don't, uh, I haven't filmed doing the second coat, the troweling up, because it, the uh, video is quite long anyway, and it just makes the video even longer, which isn't, uh, isn't that much fun. Or not to watch anyway. <laughs> Okay, the other say fortunately that's just about a perfect fit on this side. This is how it's done guys. I mean like most plasterers, any large flat square uh, walls that you can get with no sockets in, <laughs> or no pipes, no wires hanging out. Uh, absolutely lovely, but um, life, real life isn't like that. <laughs> you have to do uh, these twiddly bits. Say, so fortunately, now with those, um, <laughs> those ink spots that uh, bleed through the plaster, you don't have to go around screws anymore because you can put those on. And they shine through the old uh, plaster after it's been put on to show you where the holes are so the uh, client can find where they are to put their screws back in to put their rads and things back on the wall. Yeah, that bit of wall there on the right hand side as well. I'll cover that one with the ladder. Oh, this side, I'm having to use what well, is basically just another smaller trowel more of a gauging uh, trowel variety. But you find basically you need these for varying sizes to be able to do uh, these awkward these awkward um, bits of plastering, whether it's around something like this, or it's around a doorway in a room. Uh, it's just handy to have, handy to have decent ones that um, don't rust too quickly. If you can get stainless steel, uh, great. So now I think this and my miniature Marshall Town are both uh, carbon. But without these kind of tools, you just cannot do these uh, these bits. And obviously, when you second coat these up and trowel them, you need to use the same trowel as that I'm putting on with there. And. Uh, yeah, if it's drying enough, you should get a nice finish off the back of one of those.
they say this video is not of the whole um, the whole thing there we go I put the ceiling on that small wall the wall that the ladder was against again as I say I have to push the ladder back and then let the ladder go back on top of that and then when that's all uh, all done uh, Bob's your uncle and then I think it was the following day uh, I think it was the following day it might have been the same day <laughs> I think it was the same day, uh, yeah, I hit this wall, uh, the big nightmare wall, and it is best to get your big nightmares out of the way first. Anyway guys, uh, there we go, I hope this has been useful to you, um, I didn't want to bother, I, mean, I was under pressure anyway, but I didn't want to bother having to uh, um, film the rest of this uh, hallway, it's pretty bog standard, like, and it's covered in a lot of my other videos. So, anyway, as ever. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, thanks for liking, and I'll see you at Ask the Plasterer or in the next video. Bye for now.